What's up money tribers? Welcome back to another stock analysis video and in this video we're talking about Coupang. Now of course Coupang was one of my speculative plays for 2021 and with it being a new year I am currently reviewing all of my positions and deciding whether I should trim, sell off or add to some of those positions. And so in this video I'm going to be walking you through a current set of analysis on the stock. I'm going to be taking you through my 18 point checklist as I always do and then at the end of this video I'm going to be giving you my my personal prediction in terms of where I think the stock could be headed. But before we do that, let's quickly take a look at the charts and see what has been going on with the stock over the last year. So of course the stock IPO'd last year and since then the stock has been under quite a bit of pressure. In fact, it has lost 54% of its value since the IPO. And uh, if we look at the last six months, down 49% and in the last month it has lost another 18%. So of course a lot of investors have been growing frustrated and there has been a pretty big sell-off. Now just quickly looking at some of the analyst ratings on Simply Wall Street, they talk about the fact that earnings are forecast to grow by 64% this year and that revenue grew by 62% uh, year over year last year and now of course one of the risks is that there has been significant insider selling over the last three months. Now again this is not something that is uncommon with stocks that have IPO'd. Often when a stock IPOs you will get some insider selling, uh, often it is a hedge for the insiders. That being said it is something you do need to keep your eye on. Now I found a very interesting article out by Investor Place and there was some really good content in this article which I'd like to share with you. Uh, they talk about the fact that investors should be bullish about Coupang uh, and while it has rewarded early investors following its massive IPO back in March 2021, uh, it has obviously been racking up the losses and uh, this, this has really been making a lot of investors a little bit worried about the future growth of the stock. Now some of the things that they talk about is the fact that when a company's revenue growth is outpaced by the growth in its losses then that is a big negative signal and in fact this is exactly what was happening with Coupang during last year. In fact revenues grew by 38.5% uh, through Q3 and losses grew by 199% in the same period. So definitely a massive, massive area of concern. Now something that also needs to be pointed out is uh, in the most recent trailing 12 months data, the net losses have still been pretty big but they have decreased a little bit in relation to overall earnings. But of course one of the big things everybody that is bullish on the stock is talking about is the fact that earnings are up. Now of course the other thing that uh, this article is talking about is that investors should expect the losses to continue at Coupang. Uh, this is something that is pretty typical with these kinds of businesses. If you go back to the early days of Amazon, Amazon racked up losses for a very long time before they actually turned a profit. But it's fair to also consider that watching the relationship between revenue and losses moving forward is really important and uh, obviously the better it gets the more attractive the stock is going to become in time. Now one other thing that is really important to take into consideration is that uh, regarding the losses there was actually a fire at the company that cost the business 296 million. Now of course there is uh, insurance that is probably going to come forward and help clean up some of those losses but it is a big part of the losses that were on the books for last year so just keep that in mind when we're looking at our stock sheets. Now very quickly we're going to go through the stock sheet because I think there is quite a bit of stuff to cover but I really want to get you through that 18 point checklist as quickly as possible and then get you to where I'm going to be on the stock and what my personal strategy is going forward. Now first of all just very quickly looking at the stock we can see it has a market cap of 43 billion. Uh, the share price uh, at that IPO stage 48.47 currently trading at 25.12 so obviously lost a lot of value since that IPO. No PE and that of course is because they have negative net margin and keep in mind there is also negative equity and uh, that equity to market cap is sitting at negative 9.25% so that is pretty high and then we also have negative free cash flow so from a fundamental perspective the stock certainly isn't looking good. Now interestingly enough if we have a look at the key ratios debt to equity is actually being pretty well managed at this moment in time although the debt is pretty high. Um, it, it obviously we one would expect with the losses that had happened that it would be a lot worse. The price to sell and price to book well there's a big difference in those two. The price to sell sitting at 2.73 price to book at 17.09. So again people are kind of buying into the revenues at the moment and this is pushing that price to book up at the moment. Now having a look at the insider holding 2.45% and institutional holding is sitting at 80%. 
Now, also very interestingly, despite the big sell-off on the stock, uh, there is a pretty small short out against the stock, 2.38%, and this is on a ratio of 5.59. Now, in addition to this, obviously we need to take into account that return on equity, return on asset, and return invested capital is non-existent at this moment in time. Now, if we come down to our year on years, there's some really interesting stuff here. First of all, no shareholder dilution at this moment in time, although I do anticipate they're probably gonna release a few more shares if their price starts to go up. Assets have been growing, of course, and then if we look at the total revenue and gross profit, those are actually up. Now, in terms of the bottom line numbers, unfortunately, those are not only not heading up in the last uh, trading 12 months, but these are actually all numbers that are in the red. And if we look at the earnings per share, uh, this has specifically got quite considerably worse over the last trading 12 months. So certainly if you look at this on the face of it, you're probably not investing into this company based on the fundamentals. That's why I said I wanna go through this as quickly as possible. So now quickly on the 18 point checklist, of course uh, they are scoring on the fact that dividend is less than free cash flow. Debt to equity, well that's being managed a little bit better than we would hope, uh, than we would expect, should I say rather. And the current ratio is of course greater than one and shareholders have not been diluted. So those are plus factors. The P ratio, non-existent at the moment, net margin in the red, and they do have negative equity. So those are the negative points on the key fundamentals. Now moving down to our momentum factors, they have momentum on the top line revenue. That is of course total revenue and gross profit. However, no momentum on the bottom line revenue, operating income, net income, operating cash flow, and free cash flow. This is where they're still not producing profits and that is of course a concern. And it's something I preached the whole of last year is, look, if you're gonna invest into a company based purely on top line revenues, you've gotta be in it for something other than the fact that the company is making money because as is evident, the business here is not making money. Now on the growth factors, we pretty much can't score them on anything. The share price is depressed against its opening share price. Uh, if we have a look at that return on equity, return on asset, return on invested capital, and of course earnings per share, those are all in the red. So in those areas, we are marking them down. Now, unfortunately on our valuation models, it is pretty difficult to come up with a valuation based on free cash flow because they are trading on negative free cash flow at the moment. So that means they essentially have a negative valuation. And it is the same picture for the DCF based on the earnings per share. So we're not really able to generate any kind of models based on the actual uh, financials. So anything that we do come up with would be based on some modeling outside of the financials. So specifically looking at the stock right now on the fundamentals, they are meeting about 57% of our criteria. Momentum only 33% and of course on growth, nothing. So fundamentally the stock is exceptionally weak. Now the analysts are coming up with a price target of 31. And we actually believe that this $31 price target is quite attainable. Now, the reason why we say that is we have specifically looked at the market share, we've looked at uh, the kind of growth trajectory that they're on. We're also looking at how soon they can potentially start turning a profit. And there is a huge, huge growing usage of the site. There's obviously one of the fastest growing businesses in Southeast Asia at the moment. And we do believe that there is some really good long-term potential. However, it is really difficult to determine how long those losses are gonna stick around. And so because of that, uh, I would say that you need to be very conservative if you are going into the stock. And if you are going into the stock, it is gonna be lar largely based on a speculative play. So there is currently about potentially 23% margin in it. Again, if you're going into this, this is a speculation play. You're not gonna be going in based on the fundamentals. And I really would encourage you to go and study the actual usage cases around the business and really go and have a look at what they could be potentially doing in the future. Because again, if you are buying into the stock, it is a speculation play. You're buying the business model and you're not buying the actual money on the table. You're not buying revenue and you're certainly not buying profits. So at this moment in time, I think this is a really good stock to keep your eye on. I don't think you should be buying too much of it. I have a very, very small position in it. Uh, it is a stock that I'm interested in. Of course, anything out of Asia uh, that could potentially uh, you know, gain mass market traction. There is a huge, huge consumer market there, which is still fairly untapped. And because of that, this is one of the plays that I'm keeping an eye on. That being said, I will not be adding to my position this year. Uh, and even if the price does continue to go down, I'm pretty happy with my position. I'm gonna be sticking with it. And uh, we'll see how that pans out during the course of this year. And of course, 
early next year, I'll be reviewing my position in the stock once again. So certainly I am committed to holding it for the next 12 months. Now that being said, if you are interested in getting involved in some questions or discussions around the stock, don't be shy or anything else stock related. related. Get, get down in the comment sections uh, below and uh, start commenting and start chatting with some of our money tribe here on the channel. There is a really active uh, community around the channel who are always exchanging ideas around investments and obviously bringing a lot of different dynamic viewpoints other than what we present here on the videos. And this is one of the benefits of the channel. You know, you get to spend time with like-minded people who are interested in growing their wealth, increasing their investments, and obviously making sure that they get gains in the future. Now, of course, if uh, you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see some more content like this, you can check out some of the videos coming up on your screen shortly. Also, don't forget to visit the homepage of our channel. We've created multiple playlists for you guys to check out and there's some really, really good content there. And uh, one of the things I'm preaching this year is that uh, more than ever, investing is about keeping a level head and removing the emotion from your decisions. So I hope that leaving you that message will give you a little bit of an inspiration to return back to basics because let's face it, 2021 really was a crazy year.